Hey guys, welcome back. This lesson is titled Transforming Negative Beliefs. It's one of the most popular questions, it's the most frequently asked question almost, is this is great, Bentinho, great stuff, I love your stuff, but when it comes down to it, how do I transform a negative belief? And for some reason, it's one of the hardest questions to actually answer because People always say, you seem to do it so easily, and in a sense I do, but why do I do it so easily, generally speaking? Of course, I have my edges, I have my challenges as well. Uh, and some are more challenging to transform and take more conscious devotion than other beliefs when they're noticed. But why overall I'm pretty good at transforming negative beliefs is because it has become um, a very intuitive, clear game. So for me, no scenario is exactly the same in terms of when beliefs come up. That's because no belief is exactly the same. They all have root causes that are can be um, brought down back to uh, lack, usually, if we're talking about negative beliefs. So somehow if you feel a bad emotional energy, that is your guidance system kicking in, as you know by now, letting you know that there is a belief underneath this moment's perspective, that you're, you have a perspective that is triggered by the scenario that's presently occurring in your life or a thought or an emotion or someone telling you something. But something triggers an emotional state which is pointing you to the fact that you have a, a belief about what's occurring, right? So the reason that it's kind of hard to give one set formula is because every belief sort of requires an individual approach. So it's more about starting to practice um, with your beliefs as often as you can and you'll get the hang of it. So practice makes perfect in this sense. That's why it's hard to give a formulaic response to that question. How do I transform negative beliefs? What do I do when a negative belief pops up? Now there is some kind of formula that it can give you. This is the basis, but you'll have to dig into the individual belief yourself and you'll have to bring the best of your clarity with you into that conversation, into that inner dialogue, into that inner game of contrast, of showing yourself through contrast, which I'll get to in a second. So a negative emotion comes up. You now know that's a clear signal that your higher self disagrees with one of your perspectives about this moment or about what you were just thinking. So it's time for you to do some cleanup unless you want to endure the negative feeling unless you want to rest with it and be with it, which is fine, it's a great approach as well. But at some point, if the same negative emotion keeps coming up, if the same belief keeps getting, getting triggered, it might be worth it for you to look into what that perspective is and how it's out of alignment with who you truly are. After all, you care about your life, you care about your acceleration, you care about your existence here, you care about your theme, about your purpose, about why you're here, what you wish to do, and who you wish to manifest yourself as, how you wish to express infinity in your particularly unique and beautiful way. So first step upon the arrival of a negative emotion, awareness. This is simple because I'm assuming that if you're aware of a negative emotion, the awareness is already there. So this is effortless, this is obvious, but it's required. So step number one is awareness, awareness of the emotion. Step number two is awareness of the underlying belief. So after you've become aware of the emotional state, which is usually how beliefs show themselves to us, is through the emotional state. And if you refer back to the previous lesson, the five levels of consciousness, and look at the diagram, you can see that emotions are responding to the belief systems that underlie the emotions. So step number two is awareness of why the emotion feels the way it feels. So by that I mean, what is the perspective that is triggering that emotion? What is your view of the circumstance that triggered the emotion? What is your angle? What is your understanding of the thought that you just had that then seemingly triggered the emotion? What is underlying the emotion? And to what extent is this in or out of alignment with the infinite abundance of your free spirit? The further away it's removed, vibrationally speaking, or distorted, 
from the core frequency of your true being, which can be described simply as pure love, light, bliss, abundance, infinite possibilities, worthiness, etc. The further away or the more this particular underlying perspective is distorted in its vibratory state in comparison to the true vibratory state of your being, of your true being, of your true spirit, of what is the truth of existence. To that extent, you'll feel bad, right? We've seen this in previous lessons. We've explored this. So now you wish to be aware of, this is still step two, you want to be aware of what that belief is. Again, number one, be aware of the emotion. Does it feel good? Excellent, amazing. Stay in that energy. Amplify it. Enjoy it. Milk it. But if it feels bad, then step number two is awareness of why does it feel bad? What am I believing is true right now that is out of alignment with the truth of reality? Because that's the only reason you can have a bad feeling is because you're believing something that's not true, that's not in alignment with creation and the creator and infinity and your true being, your true spirit, your true theme. Then step number three is to ask yourself, and again, this is just a very generic formulaic overview and you can tailor this to your own needs and you ought to at some point that becomes a dynamic intuitive play and you know best how you operate but this is a generic formulaic overview so step number three would be to ask yourself why do i believe in this belief so step number one awareness of the emotion and whether or not it's in or out of alignment whether or not it feels good or bad if it feels bad you proceed to step number two step number two is awareness of what is the belief in other words, what must I believe is true in order to feel this way about this circumstance? And then step number three is, um, how do I believe that this belief is serving me, is, is benefiting me? What, what hidden value have I projected into that belief? Because sometimes step number one and step number two are enough to release a negative belief. And you'll find this more and more effortlessly happen. Why? Because you gain a lot of confidence in the benign nature of your spirit. You have seen from so many angles now, at some point, that there only is infinite abundance, that you only are unconditionally loved, that you're, there's only infinite worthiness, that you are meant to have everything you desire, to experience everything that you genuinely desire, that this is all meant for you, that this is all your play, that everything is inseparable, that you are the one infinite creator, that you are inseparable from all of creation, etc. The more you can start to see life through these points of view, the more quickly you can liberate beliefs the moment they're noticed. However, if it's not instantaneous at step one or two, then step three will dig into why you're holding on to a belief that's fundamentally untrue in the eyes of the creator, in the eyes of creation, in the eyes of consciousness, in the eyes of your spirit. So the third step is to ask yourself, how is this idea that I'm believing in serving me according to my mind? Even if from a conscious point of view, you now have come far enough to know that the belief, say, I am unworthy of love, no longer serves you, even though you may know that, there may still be an underlying belief or a projection of benefit that's being projected into that belief. So here's the thing, you cannot hold on to a belief that has been made conscious, so that has gone through step one and two, awareness of the emotional state, and then awareness of what the belief is that triggered the emotional state, as soon as these two steps are accomplished, the belief ought to leave your belief system. It will naturally release itself. It will liberate you. It will leave you alone. It will transform itself into bliss, into freedom. If this does not happen, it means that you have another underlying perspective about that belief and you think that it's serving you. So if you think on some level of your being, and some level of your mind, that that particular belief is keeping you safe, is bringing in money, putting food on the table, is allowing you to protect yourself, uh, allows you to stay in control, etc. If you have an underlying belief that projects a lot of benefit into a negative belief that you consciously now know does not no longer serve you, then you'll still hold on to that belief until you go fully through step three and ask yourself, how does my mind believe or perceive or project 
that this negative belief, this lack belief, is keeping me safe, is protecting me, is making me somehow secure my happiness far away in the future, etc. If you can find the underlying belief that suggests that the negative belief that you already know is out of alignment because it doesn't feel good, if you can find that underlying belief that suggests there is benefit in the negative belief you just spotted in step one and two, then you can truly start to loosen up that belief from your, um, from your belief system, like toxins being released from your cellular structures. So to loosen up that belief, ask yourself, how do I believe that this idea is serving me, even though I may already know that it's not? But how do I still believe that it is? Even though I don't believe it is, how do I still believe on some level that it is serving me? In other words, why am I still holding on to this idea that I've now made conscious? And usually it will be an answer along the lines of, well, if I continue to believe that I'm unworthy of love, then at least I'll keep some kind of control. I'll be able to stay in control, keep my composure, and be controlled around other people, make sure that I can act in a certain way and that they'll like me for it and that they'll appreciate me for it. But if I let go of this idea that I'm unworthy of love, then what will happen? I'll just be free, I'll be wild, I'll be irresponsible, I won't be controlling the words that come out of my mouth, I might just say crazy things, and then I may actually end up not being accepted, not being loved, not being appreciated, being rejected, and all these types of ideas. So do you see how even though you may consciously in step two recognize, hey, the belief I'm unworthy of love is ridiculous. I know that existence is one big giant being, one infinite being that loves itself and creates only more out of itself. I am created out of the one being. Why would one being not love its own creation? Because it's created out of its own being. You know all this or you're starting to know all this. And so you may consciously recognize I'm unworthy of love is not relevant for me anymore. It doesn't serve me. However, in step three, you discover that you believe that holding on to that idea at least gives you some kind of mental control and stability that will then allow you to be more loved. So you see how the idea, I'm unworthy of love, is also projected into that, if I continue to believe that I'm unworthy of love, then at least I'll be able to control myself, keep my composure, and then I'll be loved. So it's like the negative belief is trying to find its counterpart by holding on to its own belief. But this is impossible. You can search YouTube for, um, and I'll include it in this lesson actually. Um, it, it's an old video, but so I haven't watched it in a while and maybe I don't fully agree with everything anymore, but um, the core of it is still very valuable, which is in that whole meeting, I take one singular approach, which is you cannot win from a belief on its own level. So you have to, in a sense, admit defeat to a belief in order to recognize that you're free from the belief. To fight a belief on its own level is redundant. So we're not trying to fight beliefs here. A belief can be its own belief because it keeps you safe on that level of understanding yourself. So a belief has purpose and value at its own level, at its own playing field. So each belief has a frequency range, a frequency domain, a playing field, like a chessboard. And it's great at playing that game. It's, it's useless to try to beat a belief within its own playing field or to try to change the playing, the rules of the game on that level. So if we wish to transform a belief, really all that we do is we are able to say, well, thank you, this is a great belief. Someone will pick it up someday and it will serve them in their journey. I have picked it up for the past five years, but now it no longer serves me, no longer feels good. Thank you so much, belief. You are absolutely right in what you believe in absolutely valid, everything is equally valid, all perspectives are the one's perspective, are the one's expression of itself, and you are absolutely adding to the expansion of creation. You are giving creation a flavor that otherwise it would not have. So thank you for believing in what you believe in, and you are absolutely right from your own point of view. I'm not gonna argue with that. You will always win from your point of view. However, I'm simply not going to play this game. I'm going to give you your success. You win the game. You will always win the game on your level. But I'm going to win the game by letting you win this game so that I can actually let go of this plane and move on to the next playing field so that I can win in that sense. I can free myself. So 
fighting a belief never works because it means you're still believing in that belief and you're still trying to fight it. Oh, I don't believe in this belief, but you really do. Otherwise you wouldn't be fighting it. And so you're still playing according to that belief's rules. So it may sound paradoxical when I say admit defeat because it may feel like, oh, doesn't that mean that I keep holding on to a negative belief? No, on the contrary, if you keep fighting a negative belief, you keep holding on to that playing field realm, that dimensional realm, that frequency domain. But if you can simply say in all your abundant, confident generosity, thank you, believe you're absolutely right. I love you so much. You're absolutely right. I can never win from you. I'm absolutely unworthy of love from that perspective. You're absolutely right. But that's okay by me because I don't believe in it. You see the difference? So admit defeat to your beliefs or give them permission to continue at their own playing field, but you simply ascend, you transcend to another frequency domain altogether by leaving be the belief system that no longer serves you, by loving it, by appreciating it, by thinking it and saying, I am more than this. And you are absolutely right from your own point of view, but I am more than this. It was a pleasure working with you or sometimes not so much, but still I appreciate all the lessons that you gave me and now I am ready to move on and let you be you and simply transform myself into the next level, into the next stage of belief systems, into the next frequency domains of understanding myself and being conscious of myself. So step number one, you notice the emotional state. This is effortless. You already do this. Otherwise you wouldn't even ask yourself this question. Otherwise you wouldn't even be here. So the emotional state, you know, step one is to be aware of it and whether or not it feels good. If it feels bad, continue to step number two, which is awareness of what is the underlying belief that makes me feel this way? And to what extent is it in or out of alignment? In other words, to what extent does it feel good or to what extent does it feel bad? If it feels very bad, it simply means it's a very distorted point of view that creation does not really know what to do with. It does not compute with the fundamental laws of the universe. So, um, Step number three is then, if, if step number two does not already relinquish it, because sometimes it can, right? You're aware of a negative emotion, then you're aware, oh, wait a second, this is what I believed about this circumstance. I believe that if I don't continue to work at my job, I'll lack money, and when I lack money, I won't be able to support my family, I won't be able to live my dreams in 60 years from now, I won't be able to da 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 I believe that it was keeping me safe to believe in this. So very instantaneously in step two, noticing a negative belief, having already gained so much confidence in the abundant nature of reality, sometimes it's enough to simply see the negative belief and then it goes poof. Because you, your conviction, your allegiance has already shifted so much to simply have faith in the abundance of this inseparable universe created by your higher self that you no longer even need the contrast of question three, the proof of question three, the investigation of question three of step three. You no longer even need that because you've already done that so many times. So for many beliefs at some point, you will find as soon as you're aware of the negative core idea, you will immediately let it go because you already know that you're abundantly loved, infinitely worthy, infinitely capable, everything coexists simultaneously all at once. There is no lack ever, anywhere, at any time, in any place dimension, because it's all contained within the invisible, in, in um, infinite here and now of consciousness. So knowing that it becomes very easy to relieve yourself of these beliefs. If it still lingers, even though you're aware of the belief, the negative belief, if it still feels like it's a portion forms a portion of your energy field, then continue with step three, which is to ask yourself, how do I believe this is serving me? Now that I'm aware of this negative belief, why do I still hold on to it? So to summarize that, it's the, quest the questions, why do I still hold on to this belief? And therefore, how is it serving me? Because if you can find how you believe that the negative belief is serving you, you can, um, you can show that belief, and this is in a sense step four, it's part of step three, but let's call it step four, is to show the negative belief, uh, show it through contrast that is, is untrue without fighting it. So yes, it's true from its own point of view, but see how in the greater scheme of things, that negative belief is actually not accurate. It's not the complete picture. It's not true. It's not what resonates for you. It's not what's relevant for you. It's not what you should or ought to or have to believe in anymore. So step number three makes you aware of the reason that you're holding on to the negative belief that you're already become aware of. For example, 
if I let go of the belief that I'm unworthy of love, then I'll just go pell-mell wild crazy. I won't be in control and people will reject me and not like me. And so in order to gain love, I have to keep believing that I'm not loved. See, it works in very strange, illogical ways, but that's how the mind works. Its sole purpose is to defend you, to make sure you're protected, to ensure your happiness 500 years from now. It doesn't care about the now, it only cares about your safety. It only cares about survival. It only cares about protecting you. So in step number three will always show you something along those lines of, oh, I'm holding on to this negative belief because I believe it keeps me safe, because I believe it will get me where I want to be, even though you can now in step four, through contrast, see that that's not true. So what is step four? Step four is showing the belief its flawed premise or its incomplete perspective or its um, incorrect idea. So step four, basically, now that you've identified the negative belief and why you're holding on to the belief, how you think you're ke it's keeping you safe, step four, you put it in contrast to something. In a sense, it's like holding a sun to a candle flame. So you've been believing in this candle flame, being, being completely protective of your candle flame, which is the belief in this case, believing that it holds a lot of power and holds a lot of heat and light. But now that you, and, and that's true, you know, like this, so again, don't fight with the belief. Like it's true that the candle provides light, it provides safety, it provides warmth, etc. However, now that you pull the sun next to the candle flame, suddenly you gain perspective, you grow up you expand your consciousness. You remember more of who you actually are. You remember more of how the universe actually works. And you, your allegiance starts to shift naturally from the candle flame, which you previously idolized because that's all you could see in the dark and it kept you safe. But now that you've gained the light of the sun, you've regained the light of yourself, the true light of your spirit, of your higher self, of your true expansive consciousness. And now you can know in this abundant state that the candle no longer needs your grasp. It no longer needs your attention. You can simply holistically shift or even merge the candle into the sun, whatever works best, hypothetically or metaphorically speaking, symbolically speaking. And you can completely let yourself be absorbed by that sunlight, by the brightness, by the infinite abundance of your being. So this is just an analogy, but this is what we do in step four. We see a negative belief and maybe even the belief that that has a hold on to the safety that the negative belief provides, even though we know it doesn't serve us, but we still do it because we think it does serve us on some level. But now that we pull up the sun, the true light of abundance, we do that through either like a mini meditation on infinite abundance, a little contemplation, or, or for example, you can look back upon your life and see how you have always been supported, even when you created the illusion that you're not or that you weren't. And so, there's many ways to do this, and this is where it becomes very personal. This is where it becomes hard to teach or formulate um, um, a response to the question, how do I deal with limiting beliefs? This is where you come in, really. This is where your practice comes in, your consciousness comes in. So now that you've seen the negative beliefs, you know why you're holding on to it, now it's up to you to play with this. Now it's up to you to remember how loved you are, to know and bring in the vibration, in that observation of the negative belief, to bring in the vibration, the knowledge of how amazing you are, of how connected you are, of how everything is possible, etc. And when you do that, this frequency that you're conjuring up within yourself will overwhelm and absorb the candle flame, the negative belief that tried to keep you safe, but now that you know true safety, which is faith, which is freedom, which is surrender, which is trust, which is confidence itself, which is consciousness mastering its vibratory state, period, not having to control the situation. In my previous meeting, um, a while back, I said um, something along the lines of, if we lack vibrational control, that's when we need situational control. But you don't need situational control if you regain your vibrational control. So vibrational control equates to confidence, trust, and faith that the circumstances will take care of themselves. And in a couple lessons from now, we'll dive into that a little more deeply, into the trust factor, the letting go of the details. So again, I know this is a lot of information, this is a lot of sort of surrounding material, but that's exactly the nature of this work, 
of this lesson, which is it is really up to you. You just have to gain perspective on how this process works in general, and then you have to go try it out, practice it, and make this your own, okay? So bring in a frequency when you see that negative belief and the belief that says it serves me to hold on to this negative belief because it keeps me safe in this and this way, that is based in lack. It's based in lack of trust, lack of faith, lack of abundance, believing that there is a lack of support, a lack of love, etc., a lack of possibility. But now you're going to show those lack beliefs that their premise is flawed, that they're incomplete perspectives. How do you do that? By raising your frequency by any means necessary. Of course, with integrity kept intact, but other than that, any means necessary. A visualization, a walk in nature, reading a paragraph of a book, watching one of my videos perhaps, uh, calling a friend and expressing what's going on, or as being absolutely quiet and connecting to the, the presence of all that is and feeling the brimming nature of abundance in that way. Whatever is the easiest way for you to tap into abundance the most effectively, to tap into a higher frequency state of being the most efficiently. That's what you do when you're looking upon or going back and forth between, but looking upon or holding in your consciousness the negative lack beliefs. And then through raising your frequency, you enter another domain of energy. And in being in that different higher frequency state, you suddenly have access to all these different higher vibrational thoughts and ideas and perspectives and views. And now suddenly it feels natural again to believe in abundance. And now when you bring this energy into that belief, the belief that previously seemed to be really real and bright now pales in comparison and is reabsorbed into the true light of the true abundant frequency that you have now brought yourself into. And so now the previous idea of lack of security seems silly because you bring in the contrast of there only ever is security. I've never actually been harmed. This is all by higher self choice. This is all by benign will. This is all happening in perfect, perfect accordance with what is beneficial for me. I'm learning, I'm expanding. I have access to infinite parallel realities, etc., etc. So anything that is expensive, any perspective that's in alignment with my empowerment teaching is also in alignment with higher selves views or how existence sees creation. So simply apply any of my teachings. That can also be a way. Apply any of my previous lessons to raise your frequency, to understand, to see the universe from a holistic and expanded point of view. And when you do that, you feel amazing, you feel expanded, you feel great, you feel connected, you feel infinitely supported and abundant and loved. And there is faith on a natural level. It's natural faith. It's automatic, duh, obvious confidence, obvious trust. It has never worked in any other way but to support you completely. And when you see that and you bring that view with you to the negative belief, boom, through that contrast, it completely transforms and is reabsorbed. Again, this process may sound like a long and complicated process, but if you stick to those four steps and you practice it a few times, it becomes very dynamic, organic, and intuitive. So simply go out and practice, and this is your homework, is to find a few of those negative beliefs, let's say about five at least, write them down. So whenever you notice a negative emotion, starting from this lesson, the first moment you notice a negative emotion, ooh, a bit of a contraction, you stop everything you're doing, if you can, unless it's really, unless you're holding your baby, for example. But if you can, just stop what you're doing and um, write down how you feel. Step number one, you notice the negative emotion. And note down, this is still step one. If it feels good or bad, if it feels bad, then you write down, okay, this is what I feel. I feel bad. Step number two, what, what must I believe in or what belief was just triggered by my circumstances or by my own imagination and thoughts? Where did my mind wander off to and then I got triggered? What is the belief that got triggered? What do I believe about this scenario that made me feel bad? So you write down that belief, pinpoint it as accurately as you can, find the statement, turn it into a statement if you can. And then that statement slash believe, you write that down and you give it, in a sense, you give it a rating. Like how far is this out of alignment? 10 being the furthest out of alignment, being absolutely devastating to your emotional body and, and one being, zero being absolutely in alignment, but then you wouldn't have written, written it down. So one being just this subtle like, boom, I just noticed this tiny little contraction. And it's good to practice with these two because they make you really sublimely aware of your vibration throughout everyday life. So you can even do it with those um, very tiny contractions. 
So you give it a rating, one to 10, 10 being the furthest out of alignment, one being just ever so slightly off track, of abundance. A slight little fear about the security of your future, for example. And then step number three is if it doesn't immediately, if it immediately resolves itself and you feel great because it immediately reconnects you to that infinite abundance and it immediately resolves itself into the greater sun and you feel the candlelight merging, burning up and merging into the sunlight and you feel like, whoa, yes, this is integrated. I now see that that belief is not true. Absolutely perfect. If you still hold on to the belief that you mentally know it doesn't serve you, but you still feel that you do believe it's somewhere, it might be true, proceed to step three and ask yourself, how do I believe it's serving me? And just write this out. Sometimes this may be a paragraph or so. Sometimes it's just a short sentence. But write out what genuinely comes up. Why are you holding on to that belief? How have you projected benefit into that belief? How do you believe it is serving you to continue to see from that point of view? How is it keeping you safe, etc.? Write that down. Then once you're done writing that down, you go to step four, if it hasn't already happened naturally, and then you raise your frequency. So you let that piece of paper be for a second. You've written everything down, it's right there, you can always return to it. But now you're going to remember what is true about creation. You're going to remember how connected you are, how infinitely abundant you are, how free you are, how expanded you are, how connected you are, how infinitely capable you are, how infinitely loved and worthy you are, etc. Through whatever means, through whatever permission slips, through whatever imagination, through whatever practices that I've previously given, or by watching a little video, or doing something, or doing some push-ups, whatever works for you, whatever gets you in that state of being psyched about being alive and being a co-creator, enter that state to the best of your ability, practice this, and it become easier and easier. At some point it becomes e instantaneously under your control, and you get these bliss attacks more and more, if you allow yourself to have them, which takes a little bit of time, but also it doesn't take any time whatsoever, but just practice, practice makes perfect, in this case especially. So you do that, you reach a higher state of consciousness, you feel abundant, you feel blissful, you no longer feel the negative belief you felt, and now you take that with you and you look at your piece of paper and you almost start to giggle because you see the negative belief that thought it was serving you, but now you go, oh, poor little mind, I love you so much, thank you so much for your service. Your perspective is absolutely valid from its own point of view, but it's absolutely ridiculously untrue from the greater point of view of things. So when you do that, it remerges back into you and you have positively integrated the negative belief. And by integrated, I don't mean made it yours, I mean you have transformed it. In that sense, you've integrated that shadow side of yourself, that, uh, that um, shadowy side of yourself within which the candle flame looked really important. But now that you have the sun, you've reintegrated, you've mastered, you've transformed the shadow into just pure light. And so the candle flame no longer even appears to you. I would almost gonna say, does that make sense? But I trust that it does, and if not, just keep repeating this video a couple of times, or this audio recording, and practice, really practice. So do this with at least five negative emotions that come up for you between now and the start of your next lesson. You can do it more frequently because this is really helpful practice and you'll get better at it or real fast. Like after one time, the second time is gonna be easier, more intuitive, more fun. The third time it's gonna be even more instantaneous and more fun. This is going to be a very rapid process for you. I guarantee you that. It may take some practice, but it will go very rapidly into the direction of this intuitive, clear play that I mentioned at the start of this video, which is what makes this so hard to answer really, and which is what makes this so personal but you're going to make it more personal. You're going to make it more under your control. You're going to master your vibration in your very own way. But this is the overall overview that I give for you to start practicing with, and then you can start making it your own and make it disappear all those four steps into a one instantaneous step if you want to, whatever works for you. But go through this process five times between now and your next lesson and listen to this, to this video a couple more times. And share with us, if you want to, those negative beliefs all those steps, step one, step two, step three of writing these things down as I shared it in the homework and share it with us in the study group. This would be awesome. Okay, have fun.